you uh, you had another Irish player there on loan. Uh, try we're talking about Try Paris, and obviously in the forty three games he scored uh, nine goals for you and six assists. Is that something for Dara to aspire to, or have you talked about uh, short term goals or long term goals for Dara? Or is not much the pressure on him? The obviously what Try delivered for you last year. Yeah, I don't want to compare goals, etc., to Troy because he's at a different stage and he's a different player to Troy completely. So we, he's got his goals. We, he has his own plan that we've sat down and we've gone through in terms of, you know, what does that look like in the next three months, the next six months between now and the end of the season? And then that, that, that lives continuously day to day um, in terms of what we're trying to get out of him. Uh, of, course, of course, you want to, you know, have high goal contributions, high match minutes, which is what all of the lads want. Um, and, then, and then for me, it's... How does he do that? How does he actually contribute in games like he did the other day? And that, that there's no secret to it. It's hard work and it's studying the game and understanding how you get success. So, of course, that we, we, we'll be leaning on him. We want him to, to, to have an impact in top third of the pitch. But there's a lot of other areas of the game as well, which, you know, Troy, if you looked at his work ethic and his defensive job, you know, that that arguably was important for the team last year is the, the you know, the goal contribution. So, there's a huge element on that side as well, the defensive side, which you know doesn't get a lot of coverage, doesn't get a lot of data, doesn't get a lot of stats thrown out about it. But you know, when you talk around the, the work ethic of you know our, our front players, is, is pivotal to us being successful. So there's there's so many areas of the game that strengths that Dara brings, but also areas that you know we need to work on as well. And I suppose Liam, you've delved into the Irish market, uh, buying players from the Electricity League uh, in Ireland, like the Dara Bournes, Dawson Devi. Uh, was that so, when did they come on your radar in terms of was he actively looking in Ireland in terms of uh, looking for players within the top division of Ireland that you felt that could make the step up to English football? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a strong league that you know I think you know the has a good history of players coming through right and coming over to England and being successful and forging you know good careers at you know at, at all levels of the game in England I think and you know it's it's, it's a market that I think is. You know, it's extremely exciting in terms of some of the players that are coming through there and being given the opportunity at such young ages. You know, when you you look at obviously Dawson, you know, playing in the final like he did, you know, that that exposure he had to to that level of game. So, it's it's, it's a market that that we that we we look in, and uh, you know, I think it's it's one where there's some really exciting talents, and we, we've been tracking the two boys for quite a while. It wasn't just a, a last minute reaction, as you know, not, we don't we don't do that too often. It's a lot, lot of detail, a lot of time, a lot of energy invested into it um, and, and to make sure that, you know, we get lads that are the right fit and that, you know, can continue to grow with us. I suppose, Liam, uh, going back to the league table, I suppose, last two games, uh, four points after a rocky start. But it can be said your opponents, Morecamp, are uh, unlucky as well not to have registered a win in their five games. They have three draws as well. So, they're probably in a false position like yourselves in the league, but uh, it's all about uh, moving up the table for both clubs. Yeah, tough game. Really, really tough game, I think. And again, so, so many clubs go through transitions in the summer in League One. It's a lot different League One to the Championship in terms of the, the volume of players that are turned over. So uh, again, I think it, of course, you want to hit the ground running. You want to start well. You want to get points on the board early. But at the same point, you know, that, that there's challenges in terms of, uh, you know, transitions like I said that clubs go through so, so some clubs take longer than others to get up to speed um, our, our job is to focus on us and, and make sure that you know we accelerate the learnings that we've had the experiences we've had and and, and like I said I think it's starting if you try and knit it all together so that we you know we're chasing a complete performance to win games yeah and I suppose uh, for MK Dons obviously uh, our relative uh uh, seasoned uh, League One team, but obviously when you're coming up against teams the part of the, with, with the background of Derby County in this division and probably the resources that clubs of that stature, Sunderland, Sheffield Wednesday, Sunderland, the past Sheffield Wednesday have, does that make it hard to sort of compete for the best uh, sort of talents around the League One? Yeah, huge challenges. I think, you know, you have to be realistic with it as well. We have, a, I think a big strength of ours is the clarity of how we work and what we do, but you know, you spend a huge amount of time and energy into, you know, trying to get the right ones. But, you know, when it comes down to finances, sometimes you you can have the best environment, the best culture, you can do the best work. But, you know, if someone's willing to pay a lot more than you, then naturally you're going to lose out on players, which hey, is frustrating. It's difficult. It's a challenge. But that's, you know, that, that, that we, have, we have real clarity of how we operate and we have to make sure we work within the constraints of that. So uh, it, it's such a tough league, you know. Look at the depth that, like in Ipswich, have for example the, the squad size and then the the, the 
championship level when you arguably when you look into it and that that, that for me is a is a tough one I think I mentioned it a minute ago about the COVID element you know a year ago players were available you know a lot cheaper due to COVID and where, where the world was at a year later is the world's moved on again there's a there's a you know a lot more money being thrown around again this summer which makes it extremely difficult um, but you know within that you then have to be creative you then have to you know work even harder to find other avenues to get you know people in that, that you, you think are a good fit and can you know help us progress to get where we want to and finally for me Liam uh, one on, on one on your established players Warren O'Hara uh, played over 40 games for you there last season played five matches uh, this season do you feel that that's a player that could play maybe at international level uh, Warren do you think he's a bit he's only uh, 23 uh, obviously he's a mainstay of your team one of the main players uh, within League One as well do you feel Warren has areas that he can further develop I know it's with John Egan there as well there's in the, in the back line, there's obviously challenges to break into that, but is that something on Warren's radar? I'm sure it is. I'm sure, you know, for, for any player to, to represent their country and, you know, at full international level should, should be an ambition. Um, and I'm pretty sure it will be for Warren. So, again, that's that's the challenge. I think it definitely have goals, have ambitions, have um, dreams, but un- understand how do you achieve them. And that that ultimately is performing week in, week out, which... Since since we've been here, I, I, Warren's level has just continued to improve. I think you know, look at how we started this season. You know, in in a in a in games where it's not been straightforward for us, they've been difficult, they've been challenging. I think you know the maturity and the emotional stability he's shown in games is outstanding. I think he's really cleaned up with his basics. You know, defensively, he's you know he's really improved. And the challenge for for him and the staff is to how do we keep raising that bar? How do we keep pushing him to get better? How do we you know, make sure that he continues to evolve because his levels, you know, his levels continuously got better and he's in a terrific spot. And uh, I forget sometimes how young he is. Um, but, you know, that, 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 what, what you then look around the football side of it, what he brings as a person, his leadership is, is quite unique, quite rare. And again, I think any team would, would love to have someone like him in it.